Welcome to Gold Star Classroom, the podcast where our panelists go back to school. We'll grade them on their answers to a variety of general knowledge and trivia questions. They don't know what we're going to ask, and we don't know what they're going to say. The student with the highest grade at the end of the class will win the coveted classroom prize, the Golden Banana. I'm your host and headmaster, Professor Jerry Jaffe. Welcome to today's episode of Gold Star Classroom. I'm your host and professor, Dr. Jerry Jaffe, and it's my pleasure to introduce to you today's students. Sitting directly across from me at the table is an actress and comedian who also loves horses, Cami Blanchard. Hi, I'm Cami. Hi, Cami. Thanks for coming to class today. Anytime, Jerry. Anything for you. That's how I like it. On my right is a uh, Jewish comedian called Jake Solomon. Hey, what's the deal with lawnmowers, guys? Am I right? Minus five points. Sorry. And on my left is a uh, comedian from Cleveland who also hates horses, He's Dan Brown. Hi, uh, I'm only doing this class for the credits. I was told I can't graduate without it. And we can all see why. Yep. Uh, but this is your chance to redeem yourself because I, your professor and headmaster, will be asking you a series of questions from across the breadth and depth of human knowledge and accomplishment. And as any good teacher would, I will be grading your answers. And at the end of today's class, I will tally up the grades and the student with the highest marks will receive the coveted classroom prize, the golden banana. Students, are you ready for your first question? Yes, yes, we are. Mm -hmm. yep. There's a very popular television cable channel uh, franchise, and you've all heard of it, but what do you actually know about it? My first question is this. What do the letters ESPN stand for? My uh, engineer, Steve, will insert crickets into that very large silence. So how, I mean, do I wait? Do I not raise my hand? Can I just say what I think it is? What do you think it is, Jay? I'm going to say it's something like Electronic Sports Programming Network. You get a 75%. All right. What's that? See, that, that's that not... means you got three of the four letters okay. correct. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks. Anyone correct um, or complete Jake's answer? Extreme Sports Punting Nonsense. Um. <laughs> <laughs> <Whatever. laughs> uh, you are both correct that S stands for sports. <laughs> Got it. All right, all right. But we have other choices on the table for E, P, and N. Cami, do you have any idea what ESPN actually stands for? Oh. In some ways, I'm what, one of the most here. successful <laughs> brands on cable television. I mean, we all have heard ESPN, watch ESPN. It's often a, a major pop culture reference. People talk about it. Movies, television, parody it. But what does ESPN stand for? Sports Programming Network. Yeah, Sports Programming Network. Entertainment? We have a winner. You oh, get wow. an A, sir. Wow, thank you guys so much. And bonus points. Uh -huh. I have a couple of follow-up questions just to see what you know. This is just basic facts and statistics about ESPN. Do you know what year ESPN was launched? 1952. We have a vote for 1952. Any other thoughts? Yes, no, uh, the other way around? 86. 86, 52? Uh, I'm, I'm going to say uh, 81, Jer. I will say, once again, Jake's answer is the closest. So, Cami and Dan, if you'd like to get any grades in this class, you'll have to start doing better. I'll say, well, there's no way it started when MTV started, so I'm going to say 83. Well, 79. 1979 oh. is when it was launched. Wow. The initial location of its launch was which state? Probably ESPN fans can guess at this. Connecticut? Correct. That's where their main studios still are. <laughs> it is in Connecticut. I should go to Trivia Nights. You should go to you Trivia should. Nights. Yeah, maybe on Jeopardy? <laughs> <laughs> Over the um, many years of its existence, as a commodity, it's changed hands. Who, like, who owns ESPN? Do you know who currently owns it? Disney. Correct. Ten points to Dan Brown. Oh. Yeah, uh, Disney Thank owns you. an eighty percent stake in it, but they are the majority owners. Is it is it Disney owns it or ABC owns it? Because I know, because technically Disney owns ABC. Yeah, so it's, ABC, Walt, yeah, so it's a so Walt Disney Company 
owns 80 percent of the stake okay. of ESPN, uh, and the Hearst Corporation owns the majority of the remaining, like almost 20 percent. And I will say, this is another statistical guess, probably, but in uh, recently celebrated its 50,000th episode of Sports Center. Do you know when that was? That was like a landmark in the company's broadcast history. Well, they play Sports Center about 13 times a day, <laughs> times 365. <laughs> Four years ago. So, so to do math on your math, that leaves us with 2010. Yes. As your guesstimate. 50,000th episode of Sports Center aired in what year? I'm gonna say 2007. 2007. Feel strong about that. 2007. I'm gonna say 2008. Is that the? I'm absolutely positive. Is that the year you graduated from high school? Yes, it is. Okay. In fact, so that's why you, you know feel that? so strongly about that year. In this case, Dan's answer is the closest. Boom. 2012 is when they celebrated their 50,000th episode of Sports Center. You people listening at home couldn't see this, but I was raising the roof. He was. And doing the cabbage patch. Getting his moves on, I suppose you would say. And for your good guess of the year of the 50,000th broadcast, you get a bonus 10 points, but for your poor white boy dance moves, you get minus 15 points. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. I think we should get damn this for him to watch him dance. That's true. <laughs> he suffered. No, but I will call in the school nurse okay. in case you need any counseling. If, if you're so offended by my white boy dances, <laughs> believe me, you will overcome. <laughs> <laughs> it has been remarked upon that as a teacher, I'm sometimes a little too hard on my students. So I have... Uh, got in, in front of me right now a list of 101 ways to randomly praise your students. And so just to build up the class's self-esteem, I'm now going to randomly praise you. What an imagination. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so having um, talked pop culture and television for a few minutes, we're going to move on to the next subject. And you did so well on pop culture that we're going to go in a different direction. Uh, which is a test your knowledge of science, in fact, specifically botany. And I'm going to ask you this question. You all know flowers. I'm sure some of you love flowers. Cammie, you're a girl. I'm sure you love flowers. I do. But how long have flowers been in existence? You know, like five billion years ago, there weren't any flowers. So How somewhere you know? in the, I know because I do research. <laughs> I fact check all of these topics. The earth is only 6,000 years old, Jerry. <laughs> My answer is 6,000. You get a creationist A, which is a scientist <laughs> F. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, uh, Dinosaurs love eating flowers, so the caveman picked them. <laughs> yes. Uh, so according to the Creation Museum, all dinosaurs were originally vegetarian. <laughs> that is correct. So you will find a Tyrannosaurus Rex eating a pineapple if you go to the creation museum. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> that is the truth. So, and check their website. So they lived in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a uh, it's a pain in your heart to give their organization money when you buy the ticket to walk in, but after that moment, you're laughing the rest of the time. <laughs> um, no, in the, so in the evolution of life on Earth, flowers had to appear. And uh, evolutionary botanists have identified the oldest known flower fossils and the evolutionary progress of plants in general. And we can say with a pretty good estimate about uh, how long ago flowers appeared. So thoughts, guesses, anyone know? Two million years ago. Two million. One Here. dollar. <laughs> Jake, yeah. one dollar. You can't even buy flowers for one dollar at this point. <laughs> and if you could, do not give them to your girlfriend. That would be a very bad idea. Are, are we playing Price is Right rules where That's what I was the closest right. without going, going over? over? It's, it's almost um, not funny anymore how often people make that suggestion. <laughs> I'm just curious. It's a running theme. It's not funny, Dan. That's what he's trying to say. Oh. <laughs> It's a, it's not can, a slam. Can I make a serious guess? Yes. Can I say, can I say um, I'm going to say 500,000 years. 
I'm totally gonna, kidding. I'm, I'm, gonna, totally kidding. I'm, I'm gonna say that both of your guesses are in fact way too low. Wow. One of our audience members are nodding behind you, Dan. I bet she has a guess as to how long ago. I guess I one billion years ago. I will say one billion is a lot closer to their <laughs> answers. Although, you know what, to be fair to Dan, literally your answer is closer. Between two million and one billion, I guess two million is closer than one billion. It's been around billion years. No. Oh. She's went way over, like if she's on prices, right? Wait, two million. Uh, his, his first answer was two million. Oh. So if she said a what billion, you, say? you said a billion. said a billion, so if it was 900 million, I technically win, even though technically Using she prices was right rules. Yes. yes. I will say this, maybe this is a clue, or maybe this is just another random science factoid. Plants themselves, uh, land plants, have not been around probably as long as you might think. I'll give you the answer on that just as a clue. Um, evolutionary botanists estimate that land plants have been around for less than 500 million years. Uh, like I between guessed four that. to 500 million years. Uh, and land plants come from sea plants, and you know, all life starts in the sea. And I don't know if, if this is a clue, I was gonna go to this as like a follow-up question. But you know what function a flower serves in a plant's life? Like a flower does have like a practical role to play. Reproduction. Reproduction, 10 mm -hmm. points for Cami. Very good. Uh, so what was the... Uh... So before flowers, plants reproduced in other ways that weren't flowering reproductive organs. Uh, so that's what had to evolve, was like a different way for plants oh. to reproduce. Huh. And other plants reproduce by spores or by seeds or by things that don't involve flowers. So flowering is actually compared to the billions and billions year age of the earth. So new a technology. New it's a new technology. Wow. Absolutely. So somewhere between two million of your guess and the four hundred million to five hundred million that plants have been on land is where the answer lies. Like that's a bit of a range. And the answer, it turns out, is between 125 and 250 million years. That's where I was going next. That's yeah, I, I saw it in your eyes, so I just thought I'd complete your thought yep. for you, Jake. You know, that's the first we answer that I had, and then I just erased it. Yeah. In my heart, 6,000 years is still the correct answer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll be very popular in Kentucky with that answer. <laughs> yeah, that's where I saw all my CDs. The oldest known... <laughs> The oldest known flower fossils are about 125 million years old, and then from that, the evolutionary picture that's put together is about 200, 250 million years when flowers start to appear in the landscape of life, as it were. All right. I have to admit, uh, I find talking about the history of flowers quite sexy. Today's students don't seem that interested. So. <laughs> As the good teacher that I am, I'm going to segue to our next topic. Yes. I was just reviewing my grade book while I was doing that, and I, I would like one of you to win the coveted classroom prize of the Golden Banana. We just need to get someone's grade into the positives. I will say right now, Jake is leading with the smallest negative grade. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but let's try to get some answers. What I have here is a fun fact sheet full of facts, statistics, and trivia about a country. And your first goal is I'm going to give you a fact about this country. And can you guess it? Yes, I can. All right. Name that country. Name that country. Do it. America. <laughs> <laughs> Close. Because, of course, America is the answer to every important question. <laughs> right. Especially in Kentucky. But the country I'm looking at has the 11th largest population. The country I'm looking at has the 14th largest land area. And I'm going to give you one more clue, which is a little more specific, so it might be a better clue. It has the second longest shared border with another country. New Zealand? It is not New Zealand. Canada. Canada is a good guess. In fact, Canada, with the United States, does in fact have the largest, longest border that two countries share is Canada and the United States. So that is a uh, intelligent guess uh, worth five points. Ooh. Um, 
But uh, it is not, the, the country I'm looking for has the second longest. Um, can you say the hints one more time? Second sure. longest? Second longest shared border with another country. 11 million. Um, 11, no, the 11th 11. most populated country and 14th largest by area country. India. Um, no. no. I will say Canada, I believe, with Russia are the two biggest countries by land area. Right. So Canada is also in that list. Um, and the U.S. is not, is just in the mix somewhere, but it's not the profile of the country I'm currently describing. Um, this country's border also has another statistic that goes with it. It is the border that has the most border crossings. Mexico? Correct. Oh. It is Mexico. Um, Mexico has, um, I just jotted this down into my lesson plan, the, what they call the terrestrial border, because it's the land border, between the U.S. and um, Mexico is almost 2,000 miles, and it has about 350 million legal crossings every year. So it is the most crossed border Good for them. in the world. Yeah. Keep going, Mexico. You'll get there one day. Um, I have a couple more Mexico-related questions now that we know the country I'm talking about. But because you did bring up Canada, I will say uh, any guess or anyone know how long the American-Canadian border is? 3,000. As in 3,000 miles? miles? Or kilometers, whichever is closer. <laughs> 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 the, um, the border between Canada and America includes like the great north coast but it also includes Alaska mm. wow. and that turns it into quite a huge number over 5,000 miles combined if you put both those 3,000 kilometers <laughs> <laughs> it actually goes the other way 8,000 kilometers oh. kilometer number is usually bigger I, than the mile number I'm sorry you're right yep yeah. which, which in Kentucky would get you an A but in Europe <laughs> would get you a zero <laughs> I feel compelled to say oh, that I myself pussies. was actually born in Kentucky. You were? Yes. I didn't know that. Uh, so sorry. Well, I rarely mention it in polite company. <laughs> You're probably going to wish you hadn't. But I can approve it by saying I was born in Louisville, and the fact that I can pronounce Louisville correctly is the sign that I actually was born there. Um, so I have a couple of other questions for you. And the first one is this. Even though Cammy got full credit for guessing that the country I was talking about was Mexico, I could, of course, pull the rug out from under her answer, because that is not technically the name of Mexico. El Mexico. Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> You're one hot tamale, Dan Brown. Ooh. Uh, That's just in my pants. No. Boom. What is the, uh, no one's touching that one. What is <laughs> the proper name of the country we call Mexico? Republic of Mexico? Nope. Association of Mexico? Nope. The land of Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Jake Solomon, you're Jewish. You must know the answer to one of some of these questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't fit the mold. I'm not. Uh... Um, we, we say uh, the United Mexican States hmm. is the full name of Mexico. What? School I hate school. <laughs> I see why. <laughs> Um, although, if there were any Mexico files in the room, uh, Dan, that's people who love Mexico for you, All right. <laughs> they would also pull the rug out from under my answer because that, of course, is not actually the official name of the country either. Of because, of course, the official language of Mexico is. Come on, Jake. Uh, Spanish. 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 We'll take yeah. it from him. Good. Correct. I'll take that. Okay. So, Estados Unidos Mexicanos. Oh, yeah is the actual proper name of the country of Mexico. It does have states, just as we say in the United States. Do you know how many states Mexico has? 11. 17. No and no. 14. 14. No, 13. 31. Just reverse your numbers there. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is the capital city of? Mexico City. Correct. 10 points for Dan Brown. I'm sorry, El Sitio of the Mexico. <laughs> yeah. And I, Estatos de Republican of Mexico. I actually you did. Say um, El Sitio. Yeah. <laughs> but do you know 
be it Mexico City, Mexico, Estados, United, Mexicanos, what the word Mexico means. Hot tamale. <laughs> uh, tri which is, uh, would make it Dan Brown City in English, hmm. if that is what it meant. hey -o. What uh, What does the word Mexico mean? The co of Mex. No, although co is a suffix that means city or place. But, uh, city of love. Uh, that is romantic. Is it? It's wrong. Yeah, it's wrong. It's wrong. <laughs> yeah. Well, romance is usually the wrong answer. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mexico. It, it is kind of a strange word. It comes from uh, the indigenous language going back to the Aztecs. And so it was actually the region that Mexico City is in used to be called by the indigenous people hundreds of years ago, Mexico. So it is sort of the word for that region. Uh, and there has, in fact, always been a city there. Like the Aztecs capital city was also on that same location. Um, at that time, that city was called, and uh, this will be a word that I will not pronounce well to so the listeners at home, so feel free to fact check this, but Tenochtitlan was the actual name of the original Aztec city. Use that in a sentence, please. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I shall use it in a sentence. What is the country of origin? <laughs> <laughs> Tenochtitlan is the original name of the city of the Aztecs that is on the same location as like Mexico chicken? City. Yes. Am I saying that right? If about as close as I was. Okay, I'll give you five points for that. Okay, cool. Five points for that. When the conquistadors came to the New World, the, um, the original Mexico City, Tenochtitlan, was actually bigger than any city in Europe. Um, the, the major cities of Europe in the 1400s, London, Paris, had about 100,000 people, and this city had over 200,000 people in it. Um, so it was, you know, known for being a you know, almost a surprisingly advanced culture, much bigger city, literacy, arts, and so on. Let me ask you one more question, if you wish. Oh, and no, I have two questions I definitely wanted to sneak in. This is my fun fact sheet about Mexico. When the conquistadors came to the New World, Mexico, Central America, South America, when they arrived to this region of the Aztecs, the Aztecs thought of the conquistadors as gods. Um, they came on great ships, they came out of the ocean, they had horses, they seemed magical, they had advanced technology, they thought of them as gods. You would be a god with but all your horses. I am yes. a god, but, but Dan would hate me, so Dan hates God. Wow. <laughs> he, he is a horse atheist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, he has no faith in horses. Yeah. But um, since they saw them as gods, they greeted them with gifts. And the main gift they greeted as a sign of respect for these godly figures was? Frankincense. Not frankincense, myrrh. Myrrh is close to the correct answer, actually. Steve Myrrh. <laughs> Steve Myrrh. <Merz. laughs> <laughs> Steve Myrrh is God's gift to comedy, <laughs> but he's not man's gift to gods. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a terrible gift for a god. <laughs> We got this one on discount. <laughs> no offense, Steve. Um, one of the products that comes from the New World is actually chocolate. That's where chocolate comes from, the Aztecs. And they greeted them with hot chocolate as like the prized beverage you would give an esteemed guest of the highest possible caliber. Oh, I said, wow, I kind of like that culture. Yes, yeah. exactly. Like horses and chocolate. I know, horses and chocolate. What more could a girl need? But they were short on virgins. That's, you got to watch out for that. One other question about Mexico. What is the national sport of Mexico? Football. football which is soccer. Football so slash soccer is in fact the most popular sport in Mexico as it is in most parts of the world. So you get partial credit. Cricket. Uh, cricket is not of particular significance Pro in Mexico. Pro wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Pro wrestling is a much beloved uh, spectator event in Mexico, that is true. But what but there's another sport which is considered the national sport. Monster truck racing. Uh, no, but it is the Mexican version of monster truck racing. <laughs> really? Um, I'm being a little bit facetious, Miss, so hopefully I'll get a chuckle when you hear what the correct answer is. I will say some of these questions, of course, are obscure because I'm testing you. Mm -hmm. Some are a little more obvious, and that's mm -hmm. fine. I thought this question was right in the sweet spot of the middle. Like, I thought people might actually know the answer to this question. Something to do with donkeys. And you're getting, you're getting warmer. <laughs> horse you are getting mules. Uh, not horses, yeah. not mules. 
Not donkeys. Racing. Greyhounds. Not greyhounds. Rabbits. Chicken races. Chicken cockfighting. Keep listing animals, Camels. and you will get to it eventually. Go. Ostrich racing. My, I'm going to ask you one other Turtle. question, and it circle back around, circles back around to this question. So this is a clue question. Uh, during the colonial era, what country controlled Mexico before it was an independent country? Uh, Spain. Spain. In fact, what, what was Mexico called as a colony? Like, what was its colonial name? Spain. New it's Spain. New Spain, New Spain. Yeah. Spain. yeah. Um, so their national sport comes from Spain. And do you know the national sport of Spain? Bullfighting. Bull Correct. Yeah. Dan Brown nailed it. Oh. Woo! Well... <laughs> To thank my students. This is the portion of the show where I go to my grade book and calculate your final grades in order to determine the winner. But I want to give you all one more chance to improve your grades with an extra credit round. Mm -hmm. So if you have any fact, factoid, detail information you'd like to share with the audience in an effort to bolster your grade one last time, you each get a chance. Who would like to go first? I'd like to go first. Jake Solomon, tell us your extra credit point. So you're looking for fun facts? Fun facts. Okay. Well, um, when I was a kid, I guess we could start there. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot <laughs> about mountains. Uh huh. And uh, <laughs> and I know that uh, Mount Everest is pretty tall, guys. Yes, it is. It's actually uh, the tallest. Uh -huh. Was that a period, or did you have more you were going to add to that? <laughs> and. <laughs> And the, uh, they do documentaries. They actually put in the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like where this is going. <laughs> Give it a second to warm up. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I've actually seen it at the IMAX before. It's, it's pretty impressive stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, the Chinese bamboo tree yes. takes five years to grow eight feet tall. It's amazing. Okay. How long does it take a, a panda bear to eat it? Well, I don't like to talk about that. It just, it's a, it's a soft right. spot. It would be more incredible if it was a person who took five years to grow <laughs> right. eight feet. Yeah. Yeah. That was, um, um, and and I, think, uh, I think Obama's doing great. Well, do you know the tallest mountain in the United States? It's probably in Colorado. It is in Alaska. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Mount McKinley. McKinley. Do you know the tallest mountain in Mexico? Because I have it on my fun fact sheet, but I didn't get to it as not being worthwhile. And I'll continue to not get to it. Um, Are you going to tell us, though? No. <laughs> That's your homework. And uh, one of the interesting things about mountain heights is that a kind of a geologist and geographers debate a lot on how to define things. And so the question is, terrestrial mountains, or do you count mountains who start under water? Because the actual tallest mountains on Earth are under the oceans. Oh, well, that doesn't count. Correct. What fun is that? Right. You can't exactly. ski down it. Yeah. Ugh. There's definitely no skiing on these mountains. All right. Dan or Cammy, extra credit. Tell us something about a horse that would surprise the listeners. Yeah. Miss nothing, Horse no, Lady. Nothing about a horse would surprise most listeners. <laughs> you That's just, why I hate them. Yes. <laughs> they are the least surprising of the mammals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah. Yo, what's up with these horses? <laughs> <laughs> Having sex with donkeys, making mules. <laughs> what's up with no that? No wonder they're so long in the face. <laughs> and mules can't reproduce. But you they, that. They, I knew that. Yes. That would be a fact about horses that everybody knows, Cammie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I asked you for a fact about horses that nobody knows. You get a zero. Dan Brown, tell us a fun fact. Uh, Brazil was actually named after the Brazil nut. And that is a fact. Is that uh, something you learned, or is that something that George Washington Carver taught you? That was something I learned from David Letterman. From David Letterman. Then it must be true. It absolutely <laughs> was true. Because he has never provided misinformation nor sarcasm at any time. Nope. Or in any of his announcements. All right. Well, thank you for those edifying points, such as they were. It just remains for me, your host, to award one of these students with the coveted classroom prize, the golden banana, and with a... We should all hold hands. With a, uh, the, the students all are right. now all holding hands. <laughs> However, if they actually start singing, no one is getting 
the golden banana. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, he will self-destruct. Oh. He's got oh. Sadly, now we do not own the rights the to that song, so it'll have to be edited out. Mm. <laughs> and now nobody gets to know now what the song it was. No, um, with a score right in that meaty sweet spot of the bell curve, 50, the winner of today's Golden Banana is Jake Solomon. Yeah. Wow. Um, Thank you guys so much. Uh, this is what you dream for as a kid. Uh, you know, I always yes. woke up and I said I want to be part of a podcast. It takes me back to school. Well, it, it just remains for me, your host, to thank you, my students, Jake, Dan, and Cammie. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I don't get to speak. Uh, I learned I something that we want to speak. Text it in later. Okay. We'll post it on the website. Gold Star Classroom is written and produced by Jerry Jaffe. Our producer and engineer is Steven Gutierrez. Original music composed and produced by Jeff Geddert. Mr. Geddert is also our assistant producer. All commentary and opinions expressed by guests of Gold Star Classroom are meant for entertainment purposes only. For Gold Star Classroom, I'm Jerry Jaffe.